something happens when we get together. Something happens when we call that name. Just look at somebody and say, things change when we call Some folks are not used to all that, all that noise. <laughs> My pastor would say, you know, folks would say, you ain't got to do all that hollering and yelling, God isn't hard of hearing. And Dr. Henry would say, he ain't nervous either. <laughs> but when I think of the goodness of Jesus, and all he's done for me, my soul still cries out, hallelujah. Somebody help me with that word, cry hallelujah. Oh, that's enough, y'all, y'all. Somebody shout, this is Pentecost. Ah, God. See, some of you thought Pentecost was just a denomination. But for those who have been baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost, Pentecost is an experience. But the power of God, I believe I got some Methodist Pentecost out here. I, I, I think I got some Baptist Pentecost out here. Listen, when we get together, it's not about a denomination. It's about a God. Give it chapter 2. Anybody excited about the word of the Lord today? Yeah. I want to tell you something. I don't want I don't want us, before I even take this text, I don't want us to take this a moment for, for granted. This, listen to me, this is history. Yes. This is unprecedented. This, this, this doesn't happen everywhere. I, I don't want us to miss this moment. See, see, we we're good at talking about unity. Alive. We're good at talking about out, being the body. Out. We're good at talking about one Lord, one faith, and one back. But, yeah. but we don't display it like we should. Yeah. And I just want to publicly, just in all humility, praise God for these leaders who have the kind of heart to say, you know what? We got 51 other Sundays to do what we do. The body is bigger than your building. Yeah, that's right. I'm preaching already. The body is bigger than your denomination and your doctrine and your dogma. Yeah. That's right. Acts chapter 2. I, I, I got to get this because it's so weighing on me. And I'll give you a few practical points. And y'all done shouted five of my minutes away. So I got to move. With great rapidity. They, they ain't playing fair. They ain't, they ain't right. Pastor Dale, they're shouting my time. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. And your homework is to read the entire chapter before the day is over. Is that all right? Amen. Y'all work the preacher so hard. You, 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 yeah. <laughs> Acts chapter 2. Are you there? And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were, watch this, all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat watch this upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost 
and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance. That's enough. I want to talk to you for the next, for well, the time that's remaining from this thought, a prescription for Pentecost. A prescription for Pentecost. Lord, do it again. I think it's important that we know that Pentecost is not just about a feeling or an emotion. But Pentecost allows us to see God at his truest sense. A God of unity. A God of love. A God of favor. You remember the Lord Jesus promised after his resurrection that he will send a comforter. Oh, who yeah. is the Holy Ghost. Yeah. He says, I know you're a little discouraged because I'm leaving the earth and I'm going back to glory. But Jesus suggested that he would not leave us by ourselves. Yeah. And I don't know how you feel about it on this Sunday, but I'm glad yeah. that I don't have to encounter life's challenges by myself. Yeah. I, I, I'm glad that when I can't get a hold to my father, when I can't get a hold to my sister or my brother, when I can't get pastor on the main line, when friends hit the ignore button on me, I have a God yeah. who is a very present help, my God, in the time of me. I, I want to tell you, family, although we are in a blessed place, we are in an awesome season, I think it's important that we realize and recognize as well as good as we have it, we are still facing some sick individuals and some sick dilemmas. As a matter of fact, I can tell you, as much as we love our great nation, and we should, I think we could argue today, our nation is still sick and need healing. And I know, I know, you might be like me and don't enjoy going to the doctor. But one thing I discovered is whenever you go to the doctor, Pastor Kelvin, the doctor cannot really help you fully unless you're honest with him or her about your symptoms. You just don't show up and they start writing prescriptions. The prescription don't happen until you relate the symptoms. I wish I had a brain church out here. And I need you to know that before we can properly prescribe the symptoms for Pentecost and why we need another Pentecost experience especially in Erie County especially in Sandusky, Ohio and Castelia we must look at our symptoms and I would submit and suggest to us today that our situation and our diagnosis comes from our plight and our illness and our weakness is that we have been separated and divided for far too long. Mm. I discovered that we continuously major in the minors and we dwell on our differences instead of focusing on what we have in common. And in this season, I want to tell you, if we're going to be progressive and move forward in the kingdom and for the kingdom, we must help me, Holy Ghost. We must come together on the things we have in common and maximize the greatest common factors. So yes, there are people who are wounded and hurting and dealing with the pains and the ills. Constantly and consistently trying to figure out when we will come to the end of certain things. Every week, a brand new mass shooting. Mm. While legislators are yet twiddling thumbs, yeah. talking about extending thoughts and prayers, but won't come up with any regulations to stop this violence. I knew it would get quiet right there, but the reality is there will yeah. never be change if nothing ever changes. Amen. So we as the people of God must not only just give thoughts and prayers, but we must use our voice and our vote. As a matter of fact, we need to pray in men and women of God who have the heart of God to sit in these, oh God Almighty, to sit in these positions of power who will not only regulate, but will be real and will be radical and will do what is just and right to, to honor God, not just with their lips, but also with their lives. 
see, we're sick, family. We have so many isms and schisms. It's nothing new. It was in the Bible Day Church, too. Schisms broke out. Pastor Paul had to check some saints because they got too loose. They got to fussing, arguing, and complaining. They got, they got so busy worrying about everything but the main thing. Look at somebody say, keep the main thing the main thing. Keep if we keep Jesus as the center and the circumference of our life, everything we look at comes through the lens of the Holy Spirit, and we begin to see more clearly. Schisms. Schisms of ageism. Telling folks that they're too old and telling others that they're too young. Now, understanding that the word of God gives us medicine and a remedy saying that the Lord yeah, calls the young because they're strong. But he calls the older or the wise because they're wise and they know the way. In essence, it's caused the great divide between the seasoned saints and the new saints. Because the old saints is tired of all the racket and don't want the change. And the new saints can't understand why we're still doing it this way and it ain't worked in 20 years. <laughs> and here we are in the same church trying to grow and move forward. And God says, until you have the prescription for Pentecost, you'll look through your own personal lens. But when you begin to look through the lens of the Spirit, you'll understand that the older saints struggle because they worked 40 years to get this ministry where it is. And they nervous that this new stuff might tear it up. But when you look through the, the young saints' lens, you'll understand that they got things that they can bring to the table. And if they're a boss and CEO on their secular job, they ought to be able to come to church and exercise their give. Look through somebody else's lead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. See, division Amen. not only separates us from one another, but division wow. separates us from God. Mm. See, God is not divided. As a matter of fact, God is even not the author of confusion according to scripture, and neither should be the order of his house. Not just ageism, but sexism. <laughs> Folks are still acting like some kind of way. You are superior because of what you were born with. Let me tell you, according to scripture, there is no difference, not only between Jew or Greek, but male or female. My Lord, I wish I had a church out here. If you don't like your Bible. See, see, God is in sex as we are. We're caught up with folks oh, being different from us, but the reality is you don't have to try to demasculize a male in order to be used by God. You don't have to try to masculize a woman in order to be used by God. God has a way of using us just the way he yeah. created us. As a matter of fact, he created them. Yeah, male and female created he them. I'm starting to feel like preaching out here. And I think I need to tell you, as leaders in the Lord's church, we must understand that God has given us the awesome responsibility to help others receive the prescription to receive the power of Pentecost. Oh, Lord, help me here. Yes, we have the schisms of racism. I know to get quiet right there. It's okay. I am unapologetically mm. a brother. Yeah. I'm, I'm what they call black and they black black. <laughs> but you can't tell me my brothers, stand up Pastor Tom, you can't tell me this ain't my brother. Yeah. Amen. See, because we're looking through the wrong lens. Yeah. Yeah. And I got news for you, people of color. It's not only white folks who struggle with racism. Yeah. Come on, Some of our cousins struggle yeah. too. Wow. We need to look through a different yeah. lens and yeah. understand that God created us all. And there ain't no white heaven and black heaven and Latino heaven. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing it will be. When we all Time 
next ticket. Let me cut across the field. <laughs> <laughs> I, I ain't out. Of, I, I, you know, I ain't out of message. I'm just out running out of time. Let me get to the chapter. Acts chapter two. It, it, it reveals to us the prescription or the antidote, if you will, mm. for Pentecost. I, I, I think that many of us who have had a Pentecost experience think that it has been sandwiched in between what we have been taught and what we have learned in our local assemblies and our, our denominations. But Pentecost, watch this, is bigger than any denomination. Yes, amen. Yes, it is. Amen. Yes, it is. All right. <laughs> Let me expose this text and I'll get out your way. Aww. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, remember, Pentecost was promised, and everything that God promises, he performs. Yes. Yes. Yeah, he's not slack concerning his promises. I think we need to take a moment right there and just pause parenthetically because some of you got some promises from God that you're still waiting on. I just want you right here just to give God a quick 20 second praise that if he promised it, Lord have mercy, he's going to perform it. Just help on somebody say, just wait on him, just wait on him. Just because it's delayed doesn't mean it's denied. It's coming in due season, in due time. He who began to work, my God, is faithful to complete. <laughs> when the day of Pentecost was fully come, look at the text. They were all with one accord in one place. Brings me to my first point today. I need to share with you. If you're going to really experience and have this this prescription, there needs to be. We need to be like-minded. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. We must be on one accord. Yes. Can I suggest to you, family, that unity is the birthing place of the presence and move of God. Yes. That when you come together, God always shows up. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, we, we don't believe the Bible. Well, the two or three gathered his name, touching concerning anything, there he'll be in the midst. And that's what he says. Unity, I'll show up. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. See, understand we cannot get so excited about what we have individually that we don't rejoice and grow and groom that which we have collectively. Check it out, y'all. They were on one accord. All of those, and we, we argue today that maybe he's speaking specifically about the 120 that were assembled in the upper room. They were there together. Now, y'all know it's hard for us to get five cousins together with the same mind. <laughs> but here they are, 120 of them, my God, on one accord. You know what that word accord means in the Greek, in the original language? It talks about with one mind. Yeah. 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 God Almighty. See, what happens is our minds are separated. Yes, yes. We, we, we don't have a mind of the Lord. That's why the Bible teaches a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. what's wrong with some of our churches a double minded church. Yeah. Is unstable. Can I argue if there's not unity, if there's no growth, if there's no power and presence of God, it's because we're not like minded. Yeah. So the question is what kind of mind should we have? Well, first of all, you need a renewed mind. Yes. The Bible says, Lord have mercy, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Hold comfortable unto God, which is your reasonable service, is the least you can do. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, help me, Holy Ghost, by the renewing of your mind. And that's what he says. If you really want to see the power and presence of God, you got to change your mind because your mind is filled with images. Your mind is filled with thoughts. Your mind is filled with the memory. And as long as you focus on what's already in your mind, you'll still do the same thing. You'll still believe the same thing but when your mind is transformed when your mind is renewed you can forgive those who hurt you you can let go of the past and move forward Amen. look at somebody say God give me a renewed mind 
but then we need the mind of Christ. Mm. Yes. Let this mind be in you, yeah. which is also in Christ Jesus. Yeah. What mm. kind of mind is that? The mind to simply do and only want to do the will of the Father. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Can I argue today that maybe, just maybe, we need more like-minded people. Amen. Yes. We need more like-minded leaders. Yes. See, when you are like-minded, you can't have your own agenda. That's right. <laughs> yeah. When, when you're like-minded, you can't go in here with all of your do's and don'ts on the checklist and all of your preferences and say, if it ain't this way, I'm going home. Oh, and they don't do it this way. I ain't participating. I ain't got I, no see that's the kind of mentality that caused us to be divided in the first place. Yeah, right. You can sit on your corner and I'll sit on my corner and we can talk about what we're doing. But what you do separate will never compare to what we can do together. Yeah. That's right. Like minded family. Secondly, we need to understand location. Somebody shout location. Location. Is location. location. See, the text location. says they were in one accord in one place. Yes. <laughs> location is key. I struggle with people who are always talking about community, but never in the community. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's just like me. That's just like me saying. I'm going to participate in cooking the meal, but staying in the living room and never going in the kitchen. Ooh. Ooh, that's wow. A good one. We, we got a lot of living room people. Ooh. But at some point in time, if you want to enjoy the meal, if you want to eat good in the neighborhood, you ought to show up in the kitchen every now and again. And if you can't cook, at least bring the drinks. Yeah. They were on one accord. Watch this. They were in one place. And I want to tell you, I wrote this down. The Lord brought this in my spirit. Let me give it to you. You can have an upper room experience with the basement mentality. If we're going to go to a higher level, we got to come on up. You got to come off the basement. You got to come off the first floor. You got to come on up a little higher. Because if we're going to go up, we got to come up. Somebody say, this is our season to come up. See, Psalm 133 suggests it like this. Behold. How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. That word dwelling wow. talks about you got to be together. Yeah. Yes. You can't talk about it. You got to be about it. You got to show up. We got to dwell together in unity. And I like it. He said it is like the precious ointment upon the head that run down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard. Yes, that went down to the skirt and yeah, his garment. Here it is. Verse 3, as the dew of Hermon. Here it is. And as the dew descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded blessing, even life forevermore. The text is tailored to teach us that it is there, the place of unity, that the blessing and the blesser shows up. Yeah. Right. Watch this, don't miss it. It says life, life forevermore. Oh, yeah. See, unity, forevermore. watch this, infuses life into the situation. Yeah. Mm. Unity yeah. infuses life to a city. See, that's why when you showed up today, even though you were outside, you felt an energy. Yeah. yeah. You felt a charge. Why? Because unity is here. Yeah. yeah. That's right. When unity shows up, it will always be electric. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's what I love about the power of the Holy Ghost. He charges us to do better and to become better. I got to hurry on here. Here it is. Take your time. You're Not good. only. Amen. Do we need yeah. to be like-minded? Not only do we need to watch our location, but this is what I want to tell you, that this next season mm. is a season of the sudden. Woo! 
Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And <laughs> suddenly mm. season. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says yeah. when they get there, yeah. and yeah. suddenly, suddenly. Mm. there was a sound. Yeah. Mm. Somebody just say sudden. Suddenly. I got an announcement for you. This next shift. Mm. Come on. Excuse my English. Ain't gonna take God long. Come on. <laughs> I'm gonna catch this in the spirit. See, the suddenly season is God flipping and reversing. Mm. The suddenly season yes. is God doing things out of order yes. for order's yes. sake. Yes. The suddenly season is God bypassing oh my God. All of the <laughs> rules and the regulations, what everybody else say, because he's God and he's sovereign and he can. It is the sovereignty of God that releases the suddenly of God. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm stepping in to my season of suddenly. <laughs> yeah. 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 All in. All in. You gotta go all in, baby. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta prepare. Yeah. <laughs> prepare for it. You gotta prepare for it. You gotta prepare. Let me tell you what hurricane you got to, you gotta go all in. Your season suddenly in the sound. For the Bible says a sound like a mighty Russian wind yes. Yes. filled the entire house. Mm. It was crazy, y'all. Sound like a mighty Russian wind. Well, mm. It happened so fast. It happened so soon. It happened so suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> Can you feel the wind coming? Oh, oh yeah, it's oh, coming. Man. It's coming. Yeah. It began to shift so suddenly. Yes. Oh, yeah. That the sound can now God is doing something that he's done before. Because oftentimes a great move of God is preceded by a sound. Yes. Mm. And God said, let there be. Yeah. And there was a sound. The walls of Jericho were standing strong. They walked around mm. sometimes in silence. But then when the people shouted, when the sound was released, Sunday. the walls came down. I'm trying to help you get you suddenly here. And can I tell you today that when you release the right sound, God will release you suddenly. It's by His Spirit. Can I tell you, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by His Spirit. Says the Lord of hosts. Like a mighty rushing wind. Don't mess with me. Don't mess with me. Because I can't see the wind. Yeah. But it's moving. Yeah. Right. I can't see it, but I can feel the breeze. Yeah. And see, some of you are frustrated mm. because you can't see your suddenly coming. <laughs> but to experience this real Pentecost, Amen. it's an act of your faith. Yes. You gotta know that God is God enough. Yes. You gotta know that God is great enough. You gotta know yes. He's big enough. He's enough to make it happen. And I just need about 50 of y'all and I'll make 51 just to release a sound from your belly to allow God to move by his spirit because God is releasing the suddenly in your life. Open your heart. Open your heart. Here's the last point, I'm done. Point number five, I'm done. <laughs> Verses four through six. Show me one of the most powerful things mm. about Pentecost. Mm -hmm. Can I just read it to you? Oh, yeah. Then I'll give you the point. And they were all filled <laughs> with the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout all. all. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them others. I hear some tongue talkers. You excited? I feel it coming. <laughs> talkers. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, watch this, out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded 
Because let every man heard them speak in his own language. I'm done, y'all. Here it is. Point number five in our prescription is diversity and inclusion. Because watch the text. God says, I'm not just going to fill some of them. I'm going to fill all of them. I'm here to tell you, this next wave of glory is not just for your denomination. This next wave of glory is not just for your ethnicity. This next wave of glory is not just for your worship style. Somebody just wave your hand and say, oh, oh. Because here's the blessing. <laughs> yes, they spoke in unknown tongues. Mm. Yeah. But everybody heard in their own language. Yes. The power of the Holy Ghost, hear me, is to allow you to deal with people with differences. Yes. Mm. And still understand yes. where they're coming from. Yes. Mm. <laughs> there were Jews, there were people from Korea, there were people from all over. But they were able to express themselves as the Spirit of God gave utterance. But then they were able to understand or interpret, if you will, in the way they understood. See, I don't know your experience. Mm. Mm -hmm. I don't know your encounter I, I don't know your struggle I don't know your hidden hurts yeah. I don't know who broke your heart mm. I don't know who frustrates you I don't know what church hurt you've experienced I don't know what parent didn't claim you mm. yeah. That's right. I don't know any of that but I do know mm. that's what's from the heart reaches the heart that which is flesh is flesh and that which is spirit is spirit and this move of Pentecost mm. is bigger than a song and a shout it's a reality of knowing that the power of the Holy Ghost will give us the insight to discern those who are hurting and broken mm. our church might not show up on Sunday Mm. The, the season and the day of unlocking the door and waiting for somebody to pack your church out is over. Amen. If you're waiting on that, you might as well just Come on. start an online ministry because yeah. it ain't happening. Yeah. <laughs> we got to go get them. Yeah. 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 We got to hit these streets. Yeah. We got to turn everyday conversation into Jesus talk. We got to quit going live so much and start living a little more. You can't be one thing on social media and something else in the show. Wow. But what good is a prescription if we don't take it? Mm. That's right. That's good. Preach it. Doctor gave me some medicine for my high cholesterol. He said, You need to change your eating habits. You need to work out a little more. I said, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Two weeks later, Two weeks later, I didn't feel no better. But had you the bottom was still on food. my table. I was still eating fried chicken. Oh, that's hard. It didn't work out one day. Wow. <laughs> but when I started taking the prescription, mm. I can't give up no fried chicken. Uh. Started going to the gym. Yeah. Ate grilled a few more days than fry. Yeah. Grilled. Once in a while. <laughs> I, I ain't there yet. But 
I feel a little better. Yeah. But you gotta follow the prescription. Yeah. And I wonder if anybody at Strobofield says, God, my hands are lifted up. Yeah. My heart is ready to receive yeah. a Pentecostal experience. Yeah. Unity in the community. Unity in the body. That we will see Sandusky saved for your glory yeah. and your honor. Somebody just shout unto God with the voice of drunk. You may think we're drunk, but we're not drunk as you suppose. Come on, man. There's unity in the body. Oh, yeah. Come on, give God a praise. Come on, shout to get up from the day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Worship the Lord. What a word for this community. Like-minded, like place prepares us for God to move in a sudden. I think we all need God to move suddenly in our hearts. Can we just, before we take communion, can we just stand and sing? Yeah. I want to encourage you, if you don't have communion elements, as they get ready to just lead us in a quick course, if they have some, just raise your hand. They'll be passing some around. Uh, I encourage you to get it ready. That little cellophane piece on top, get it up ready. And let's just worship the Lord this morning.